from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews again picked up rocks to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God, you lead me through the night In the summit, in the wonder I am guided by your light You go before my every way I'm not afraid, so I will say
Today in the gospel, Jesus wants to be healed of our image of God. Wherever he went, Jesus was always being challenged verbally by the scribes and the Pharisees. And it happens so often that it gets to the point here in this gospel where they pick up stones to throw at him, and so do the other Jews who are standing around. They were okay with what he did, but they were threatened by what he said. And they thought they had him caught here. And they said, the reason why we're stoning you is not for any good that you've done or any of the miracles that you've performed, but you've made yourself equal to God. And Jesus, again, turns their argument upside down. And he said, scripture said, I said, you are gods. And he said, gods were anyone to whom God spoke his word. And so scripture has force. And so what you're saying makes no sense. What was Jesus doing here? He was making it clear that there was no argument made by the scribes and the Pharisees except the argument that distorted the people's image of God. The image that people had of God as a result of the scribes and the Pharisees was that God was in a huff. He was angry ever since the Babylonian captivity. And their job was not only to know the law, but to see to it that everybody kept it. There were 10 commandments and 613 little commandments. And the vast majority of the people couldn't read. And so whenever the scribes or the Pharisees saw a person breaking one of those little commandments, they would say, God will punish you for that. God has written down that sin. You had better be careful. You don't believe us? Look at the lepers. Look at the blind. Look at the lame. You know how they became that way? God punished them. Jesus came to heal the image that people had of God. That God always makes the first move to give mercy and forgiveness. And that mercy is always given when it is not deserved. Allow yourself today to be embraced by God's mercy. Do not be frightened of him, but fear God. And that means to have an overwhelming respect for his presence and that his presence is full of love. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we are so delighted and glad that when Jesus came, he healed the image that some of us have of you, that you are waiting somehow to punish us. But we know that just the opposite is true. That St. Faustina has told us that if our sins are as multiple as all the sands on all the beaches of the world, when we approach your mercy, they will be instantly washed away and forgiven. So thank you that the scribes and the Pharisees were absolutely wrong and Jesus was absolutely filled with love. Amen.